Radio. So mm. let's be clear, the, the goalpost has been changed. They are no yeah. longer providing two free sessions for everyone who needs dialysis. Yeah. It's not going to be for those under 18 and above 60. Yes. So, I mean, I, I guess... Yes, for six months. For six months yeah. and not for... Uh -huh. So so let's let's take another look at it. I mean, we're, we're joined right now by Kwame Saponsiedu. Uh, he's a pharmacist and research fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD Ghana. Uh, Kwame, always a pleasure. Good morning to you. Good morning, Kojo and Raymond, and good morning to your listeners. Mm. Uh, do the numbers stack up now? No, they don't. And actually, the um, NHIS knows that. And for me, we need to comment them because I like institutions when they put out cogent data because then you can have a cogent conversation that's transparent to everybody. And you realize that I've always said in the last few weeks that on the basis of the releases to the NHIS, we need to often pack them in this conversation because if they have the fun, they are demonstrating their willingness to do something. So, could you let's just do the math for you to understand where I'm coming from. You realize that they're giving a, a, a table which gives you the number of patients who are under 18 and over 60 in each facility. If you put it together, that comes to um, what you call it, 84 patients. But you know that Kolebu has a different funding scheme because there's a philanthropist who is paying for them. So mm -hmm. you take Kolebu out and it comes to 73, right? So because all you have to do, and I, I'll walk you through the calculation. So 73 patients, you are doing eight, um, what do you call it, sessions for 73 patients every month. So if you multiply eight by 73, you get 584. That's 584 sessions a month. So based on their document for the 73 patients. And then you are doing it for six months, which is 26 weeks. So if you multiply that by 26 weeks, that gives you 15,184 sessions for these people over the six months. Mm. And if you look at their own document, they give you the assumptions. They say cost per session 491. So you multiply that by 491. And what you get is 7.45 million, which is what I've always told you guys. And it's based on their own documents, if you do the math in there. And they have 2 million, so they are short by about 5.5 million, and they know it. The question is, are they being deliberate? The answer is no. Clearly, if they have the money, they are willing to fund it. Because if you look at the document, that two make makes sense. So the question now should not go to them. They have demonstrated good faith. The question should go to the people who provided the funding and approved two million to say, are they going to cough out the remaining five point five million? You get you get my point, could you? Mm. Yeah. I guess you're doing the math as I talk to you through. I'm going yeah. along, yes, yes. Yes. So based on their own document and based on the assumptions they're giving you and the duration, you can clearly tell that they need seven point four five million, which is seven point five million. Hmm. Which has always been the number, hmm. and they have two million. Hmm. Okay, so, so once again, I mean, so, uh, so either then, somebody didn't do the calculation, or uh, yeah, maybe they no, have wrong numbers. No, I, I don't think. I think for them to put this document out, and that's why I said they need to be congratulated. For them to put this document out, I think they are sending across uh, a message for the need of a transparent conversation. This is what we intend to do. This is how long we want to do it. But this is the amount of money we have. Hmm. You understand me? And, and for me, even using that to take a decision to say, well, we cannot um, help all 1,300 patients. Because if they had said that they were going to help all the patients and say they were going to do one session for each one, it wouldn't give any serious benefit to those patients. Hmm. So it's important that they have set a criteria. And the criteria for me sit in line with what the NHIS has always done, that those below 18 and over 60 do not pay NHIS fees anyway. So it sits within the apparent criteria of decision making. Mm -hmm. The question is, and, and you see, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to labor the point here, because it's not that the NHIS doesn't have money. Somebody has collected the money and somebody has cut that money. Yeah. And that's why I keep telling you, in these conversations, let's pass the NHIS because 
the, the leadership is demonstrating good faith by saying that we are going to do this, this is the amount of money we have, blah, 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 blah. But the numbers don't add up. And if the numbers don't add up, and they have, do you think if the NHRS had their own um, funds, as the law says, collected for them, and they wanted to do this, and they knew they needed the 7.5 million, they wouldn't have 7.5 million. They said, yes, they would have it. Hmm. So you know, it would be disingenuous on my part, and I mean, in my view, on any uh, um, body's part, whether I take um, a journalist or something, to actually blame the NHIS itself for it. Mm. The only part they can take responsibility for, they should have pushed back to Parliament to tell them, this is what we want to do, that two million cities is a drop in the ocean, even mm. though it, um, it, it shows goodwill. Right. Okay. Um, now, the uh, Minister for Works and Housing, Kujopo Nkrumah, actually uh, posted on Facebook about this. He's, he, he wrote, happy to read this report. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> happy to read this report that the NHIA has finally agreed to underwrite an appreciable part of dialysis care costs. Thumbs up to the board and management. The next step is to ensure automaticity, not sure what that word means, of fund flows, cut back the levy, and take appropriate market premiums. Yeah, I mean, Kojo, you said you don't understand what automaticity means. Automaticity simply means you are paying 2.5% on every purchase you are making. That money shouldn't go into the consolidated fund. It should go directly, directly to the NHIS. So that's why I agree with Kojo. That so is a... should, the money should not go into the consolidated fund. That's not what the law says. It should go automatically, same as when you pay VAT. It doesn't go into the consolidated fund, but it goes to the VAT secretariat. Yeah. So why is the NHIS money going into the consolidated fund? It should automatically go to the NHIS. And that's the crux of the argument I've had this morning to say if there was automaticity and the board was making the decision, they would know what money they have in their fund. But this time they have to go and beg for their own money from the consolidated fund. Well, to give him the benefit of the doubt, I mean, automaticity could also have been referring to um, how fast the NHIA pays their bills. No, it can't refer to that, today, in my opinion, because how fast depends on how much money is released from the consolidated fund to them. Your hands are tied behind your back three ways. The fund money doesn't go directly into their fund, one. Number two, they have been capped. Number three, they then have to go to, um, what do you call it, the Ministry of Finance and justify how much money they've been given and how they spent it. Is that what the law says? Their hands have been tied through their back in three ways. So the automaticity simply means the law should be followed. That's how I understand it. Unless, of course, he's writing something else. Mm. All right. So um, at this point, uh, we know the problem. The NHIA is signaling that they are insufficiently funded to actually do this, which means real human beings under the age of 16 and over the age of uh, 60 are going to miss out on life-saving treatment. How do we solve it? Kojo, I, you see, and that's why I should say, let's pack the NHIS, because I don't think, at least, they've got enough funds to go around for the first two months if you do the calculation, because they need 7.5 million over six months. So that's what I'm saying. It's a good thing. What I'm saying is we should be advocating because those um, patients are human beings like that. So we should be advocating for more funds to be released to them so that they can get the funds to be able to, um, what do you call it, pay for the remaining money. So I don't think at this point it would really be fair to say that real life are going to miss out. I think after two months, if they've not found more money, then I would, I would be amenable to that sort of conversation and say, if the money runs out, we are not going to be able to do six months. And that's why I said they need to be commended because when you put documents like this out, it allows those of us who do the advocacy to do the advocacy based on your own numbers. Mm -hmm. Even though, yes, some of us knew, because if you remember last week, because I did the same calculation with you on the Super Bowl issue. Mm -hmm. So, but then it's it, it, um, possible someone will sit down and say, how do you know? 
um, subject to speculation. But now we have their own documents. Yes. The assumptions are clear. The number of patients are clear. The costs are clear. The durations are clear. So mm. everyone in Ghana can do the calculation and say, these guys need more money. You have their money. Give them back their money. Okay. And that's what the advocacy should be. So that if we then try to put it on the NHIS and say, oh, the NHIS should have done their math properly, then we are forgetting about the real people who are holding these patients hostage, which is the government. Mm. So for the benefit of those who may have just joined us, uh, just before we wrap it up, uh, Kwame, take us through that calculation one more time. Right, okay. It's a pretty straightforward calculation. So if you add up the number of patients the NHIS has given us, it comes to 83. Kolebu has a different funding stream. So you take out the 11 patients of Kolebu. Uh, sorry, it comes to 84. And you take out the 11 patients of Kolebu, that comes to 73. So 73 patients, and the, um, the NHIS is saying they are doing eight sessions for them a month. So you multiply that by eight, and you get 584. And then you multiply that by 26, because they are going to do it for six months. And that comes to 15,184 sessions. In that same document, they are saying that the cost per session is 491. So you multiply that by 491. And you come up to 7.45 million Ghana mm. cities. Mm. So if you divide that by six, if you want to help the NHIS there, that you divide it by six, they need 1.2 million cities a month for these patients. Yeah. So they have enough money, just enough money for about two, um, um, what do you call it, two months. And what I'm saying is that we should be a close legion and um, what do you call it, Crediting them for even starting this, but accept that there's a limitation and help them to get the money because it's our money. It's money we save. If the, you see, the point, Kojo, we need, I want to end on it. If the NHIS is unable to do this, it's not down to the NHIS, it's down to the intransigence of government because they have the money. We save the money. The problem is that the, their money is being held hostage, and that's the bigger problem. Right. Kwame Sapo and thank you very much for your time with us this morning. Uh, Kwame, of course, uh, pharmacist and research fellow at the Center for Democratic Development, which is CDD Ghana to you and me. Okay, so here we go. Uh, once again, uh, you know, a wonderful promise falling short when it comes to uh, delivery. Yes, and I'm hoping that the NH... And, and I, there's a bit of... I agree that perhaps we should be keen on asking central government, where is the money? When are we, in fact, this is just for six months. Mm -hmm. Any other interpretation you put to it is interesting. And we have discussed whether or not this is sustainable yeah. going into the future. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and some of us have said, see, when the institution like NHI is built to do primary health care, mm -hmm. and you're actually compounding other responsibilities on it, you should mm -hmm. be careful. Yeah. Because yeah. the sources of money for NHI has not increased. increased. Anyway, in fact, it's dwindling over time, mm -hmm. mindful of what it has to do and all of that. It's just trying to make ends meet. But mm -hmm. we devoted some money for this. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that if government of Ghana at least will make up for the period yeah. so that we don't have a difficulty where anybody will be turned away. This is important. And I keep saying because if Priscilla Asante had this kind of help mm. last year, she would not be dead today. Every, every, every life matters. Yes, just that 15-year-old like what... girl yeah. could have been saved. Mm. That 15-year-old mm. girl would have still mm. been with us today, yeah. would have still been aiming and having a vision of being a nurse uh, mm. continuing on that mm. path so this is absolutely important that we pursue it and mm. we pursue it without the usual trappings of our politics and, and, and Kwame uh, um, Sapo made a critical point about the, the fact that half a loaf is better than none but, mm -hmm. but still just like Oliver Twist we would ask for more again it comes back to the question about how effective are our social protection system in this yeah. country and how we can have a more sustainable system mm -hmm. and not just the flash in the pan bit because listen how, what do we put in place yeah. can other funding allocations be reviewed to divert to this area because we are in this country and i always say that maybe let's even put aside the media reports the editor general's report is a mm -hmm. ground standing or if i can use that expression a huge area evidence for us to see how sometimes public funds are misallocated and misapplied so and these are very important things that we, we, we need to
Take a look at. In March, Parliament approved 6.87 billion Ghana cities for the National Health Insurance Authority. Mm -hmm. But we all know how it works. The approval will come. The disbursement then becomes funny. Why it's even on a disbursement basis is part of the problem mm -hmm. because the money should be collected and directly going into the uh, health insurance scheme so that they can pay for things because we have paid. Yeah. Right, but instead it goes into the big black hole mm. of consolidated fund. There's a cap, and then mm -hmm. somehow we are sort of giving them a, a bit of pocket money out of it. It's ridiculous.